What's going on? It's your boy Chris Hart here, guys. Sold out servant. Today we're outside. I'm not sure why my creative director Trey has us outside today, but we're outside here shooting this video, guys. This is a, re a reaction video to Mr. Tate here going over money, power, and wealth. Money, power, and wealth. Something we all want to achieve and to accomplish on this earth. How do you go about truly getting it? Let's see his perspective, guys. Let's comment what we think about it. Let's go from there. Good? What, what what is that? I think it's snow. It can't be snow. It's it's July. We're in the middle of summer. Yeah, yeah. I forgot to tell you before you came to Merlin, it, the weather can get tricky out here even in, in the summer. middle of July? Yeah. What is this? The last days. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Sold out service. And you know we've been working. We serve it, we earn it. The watches is hurting. Big heart, but it started with Chris. Seen a lot when it comes to this biz. Don't serve, don't earn. They gotta ship keys to be a capitalist. You can sit there and get upset about it. You can sit there and cry about it and say the system needs to change, which is what some people do, socialists, X, Y, Z. But I think that's not I think. I know that's a waste of time, right? That's futile. The best thing to do is to understand the rules of the game and find a way to win. Right off the get-go, man, right? So he's saying that um, the system in America and the world in general is rigged for the rich to stay rich and poor to stay poor and i've always thought that i always thought man what the heck man like it's, like, it's so hard to get out get out of, get out of the middle class get out of the lower middle class how do you get to be a wealthy elite in our country who do you gotta know who do you gotta pay or who you gotta bribe right to make that happen and he's saying that some class of people say hey or a group of people say hey it's not fair let's change society let's change the rules the ultra elite aren't going to change the rules so he's saying that you, you can either sit on the sidelines and stay where you're at or understand and master the rules of the game and get in the game. I've always said, man, play the game. Play the freaking game. Oh, he doesn't pay taxes. He's not paying taxes. That's not fair. Tax the rich. Play the game. Is it illegal? Yeah. Play the game. Yes, the rich are always going to get richer. Yes, the poor are always going to struggle. And that's the way the game is set up. So you still need to find the best move on the chessboard. There's no point sitting there saying, I want to play a different game because that's never going to happen. Because the people with the money are the people who have the control and they have the power. And why would they have the game set up any other way? Why would they change it? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It's also the basic of economics. I think a lot of people don't understand the true basics of economics. And the basics of economics state that even giving money to the poor, it ends up back in the hands of the rich. There's no way to stop the rich getting richer. I've already explained this before. Perfect case say that. They said handing money to the poor, it blows up. Think back, 2020, right? Maybe you received some Trump bucks. We call them Trump bucks, right? <laughs> it was a stimulus bill on the first wave of COVID. And we all got checks from the U.S. government. And those checks were given away to everybody. If you're a U.S. citizen, you got a check from the U.S. government to help you withstand what's happening in COVID-19, right? I believe if you made a sermon of money, maybe you didn't get one. And um, so checks were given out to everyone, to the poor, everybody, right? When the poor got those checks, think about it. What did they do with those checks? They take that money in, invest it in the IRA, the Roth IRA. They buy some cryptocurrency. They, they invest in real estate, Airbnbs, rentals, flips. Or they take that money and go spend it. So let's think about it. If I'm poor and I take the checks from the U.S. government, I get my 1500 bucks. I go out to the movies. I go buy some clothes. I go put a down payment on a car. I go to Miami for the weekend. I spend that money. Who owns the big studios at the movie theater? Disney. I, I, I go see a Marvel film. I go buy a car. Who owns that car company? I go to Miami. I stay at this hotel and go to that bar and that restaurant. Who owns the restaurant? The wealthy do. So we take the money and give it to the poor. And it flows back up. A few select few say, hey, I'm going to invest that money. I'm going to invest into myself. I'm going to buy a book. I'm going to pick up a skill, go to a, a, a conference and learn about money and learn about wealth and learn about skill sets. But most take the money and spend it. Why? Because it's a cycle that happens in, a, in, a, in the poor and in the middle class. So what he's saying, we saw it happen just recently here in our country in 2022. I remember during COVID when they did the stimulus checks. And they passed out all this free money to everyone, a thousand. In England, they gave a lot more money. But in America, everyone got like $1,400 each and everyone was happy about it, saying, oh, he's giving money to the poor. Yeah, but what do those poor people spend that money on? They either, well, Amazon stock tripled yep. because they all went to Amazon. Yep, so Jeff, Be well. Jeff Bezos got richer, yeah. right? But the fact is that there's less companies than there are people. All those $1,400 checks amongst all those people at the bottom ended up getting, ended up in the hands of a few companies and the rich got richer and you can't stop it. Mm. Doesn't matter if those people invested their money, doesn't matter if they bought stocks, doesn't matter if they bought a crypto, doesn't matter if they bought a house, whatever. The people who have the assets and have the companies and have the control are always gonna end up getting control of the currency and they're always gonna be richer. So yeah. that's kind of how it works. And it's getting worse and worse. 
It's have nots and have yachts. I think it's all about being opportunists, right? Because there's a lot of crypto have people here right now. Yeah. Um, and I remember you was on your video or something. Crypto was at a point where it was like three thousand pounds. So what's that about uh, five thousand dollars? I want to yeah, say yeah. something like that. I think more or less everyone here bought some. Yeah. But the whole general public thought it was going to. Yeah. And you know the opportunity there, no one grabbed it. Yeah, sort of and thing. that's and that's another thing about opportunities, right? Because you have to be positioned to take advantage of opportunities. Yeah. It's like in chess, they say uh, good moves come from good positions. It's true. You can't find a good move from a terrible position, right? If you're sitting at home with no money, it's hard to invest in Bitcoin at a dollar. It doesn't <laughs> matter what it goes to, right? you got to be in a good position to take advantage of things. So you've always got to be in a position where you have a good network, you have good information, you have some kind of liquid money, mm. you have the ability to survive without that money, you can take a risk. Like it's hard to set yourself up. I'm in a position now where I'm, I'm in the NBA. I'm, I'm an NBA player. I can never go broke again. So it doesn't matter, right? Once you're in the NBA, you can I can throw a million dollars at something. It doesn't matter if it works or not. Mm. So for me, it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. And that's why it's so much easier. They always say the first million is the hardest, and they're completely right. Once you get to a certain point, you can just you can gamble to a degree, yeah. right? Well, doing my research and stuff, you haven't always been a multi-millionaire, yeah? I want to say probably near billionaire level or something like that. So when did you clock all of this? When did you find out this side of life? I always knew that. The Matrix existed, and I always knew that the traditional systems and From the traditional. From what age did you know? Say again. From what age did you know? I always knew. Okay. I just knew. <laughs> even even when I was going to school, and they're sitting there going, "You're not going to get a good job if you don't get good grades." I was the one sitting there going, "You're a liar. Shut up." I just knew the teacher was lying. I knew school was bullshit. I knew college was bullshit. I knew university was a lie. I always knew it was a trick and a con. I didn't truly understand things to the level I understand them now. But I had an intrinsic understanding, and I think everybody does. If you're if you're at a gas station and it's three in the morning and, and a Lambo pulls up and a guy gets out of it, you're thinking criminal, drug dealer, gangster. Yeah. You're not thinking, ah, he has a uni degree. Because you, you know, you're not gonna think that. So when you see money, people don't even associate the money they see with university. <laughs> But then they go, I want to make money, so I'm going to university. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't That's so crazy. Like, you see someone in a yellow Lamborghini, right? You don't think, man, what degree does he have? What school did he go to? What prestigious um, teacher or, or institution did he learn from? You think, man, is he a business owner? <laughs> is he a drug dealer? Is he an athlete? Um, we say these things, right? We think, okay, cool. Like, where'd that money come from? We, we, we rarely ever associate wealth, abundance, money with education. We may associate security of education. Security is not being abundant. Security is surviving. S security is getting by, having enough. And it's crazy, always, always associated education with security. Think about it. Your parents say, hey man, you have a degree to fall back on. <laughs> they have a degree to fall, at least get a degree so you can fall back on it. So have a degree so I can fail back to security, to a, 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 a level, of, a level of, of class that is just, enough like just just the whole concept of it we're setting ourselves up for failure saying hey fall back on a degree hey for security purposes man have this here but for abundance wealth advancement growth no one ever says that man hey hey hey, hey, hey advance back on a degree no 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 it's, it's move forward take risks take chances you're seeing it here man when andrew tate's talking about this it just makes total sense everybody knows that the system and the path they lay out for you is not a, a path that's going to lead to where you want to be mm. and i didn't know what the other path was but that intrinsic distrust for the system and that distrust for the things they wanted me to do made me search for other avenues and then i found them right and if you speak to the people who are richest if you speak to the people you know this is for everyone at home as well if you speak to the people you know who have the most money and go up to them and say hey what made you rich none of them say school do any of them no. say school made me rich? <laughs> I got an A in GCSE. Like, who gives it? It's, it's bullshit, right? So it's all indoctrination. So I, I knew it was indoctrination. And for that reason, I was always searching. And if you're searching, you're going to find. Yeah. So I was reading a, a, a book from Robert Kiyosaki recently. recently. I can't forget. can't remember what book it was. He's got so many books and so many titles, right? And so I was reading a book and he said, uh, your banker will never ask for your report card. Like, am I, what, what does that mean, your banker, right? If you're looking to grow, to expand a business, to go out for a loan, get a loan to invest in real estate, to get a loan to advance in your business, to fund payroll, whatever it may be for yourself, right? When you ask for a loan from the bank to go build wealth, go advance, take on debt, to go make more money in this country, right? It's a great country of America here. When you do that here, what happens? They don't ask for your report card. Let me see your report card from, uh, from 12th grade. Let me see your report card from your junior year at USC. Let me see your transcripts. Let me see your transcripts. No, they want to see your what? 
your financial statements. They want to see your balance sheets. Are you profitable? What's your debt look like? Are you making money? What's your credit score? What's your ability to pay back debt? They want to see those things. Those things aren't built in college or in high school, right? They're built by learning about money and finances, and he has a great point there. No, I always believed that as well, growing up as well, I always thought that, here, here was my theory, I've got a theory of business studies, a lot of people thought I was full of shit and stuff, yeah? yeah. But I want to kind of hear your opinion towards it. Yeah. So, my whole, I've done business studies in GCSE, in my opinion, the whole textbook, everything, the teacher, everything's full of shit. Yeah. yeah, literally, I feel like they overcomplicate it and confuse it on purpose yeah. because they don't want uh, entrepreneurs, right? And they want people to be stuck in the system. I people said I'm full of shit because of that. No, no, I, no, I know exactly what you're saying, but they teach you things that the problem is as well, it's difficult because the way that humans work and the way that we are, we've evolved as a species is that we don't really learn lessons unless they're learned the hard way. Yeah. I believe that unless a lesson has taught the hard way, you're not going to learn it. You can have so many near misses and people won't learn their lesson. Bro, you must know a guy who goes out there, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, doesn't slow his ass down till he wrecks it. Yeah. Like, this is how people are, right? So you need that pain for the lesson to sting enough to really genuinely go inside of your mind. And it's the same with everything. It's the same with driving a car or business. Truthfully, if you want to learn a lesson about business, you're going to have to suffer at some point, right? Mm. So we always say that most people are not successful with their first companies, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. I get that. The truth is, there's a lot of people who make a lot of money with their first company, but they just spunk it, act an idiot, and it all blows up in their face. And that's the, and that's how you get the discipline on your fourth company. That when you have three million in the bank, you just leave it there, you know. It's yeah. and don't and don't be dumb with it. So you need to you need to go through some pain. You need to experience some negative things. You need to have to a, to a degree some trauma to really even learn any lessons. So, yeah, business studies. You're right. The book. That's, that's not going to teach you anything about business. You need to get out there on the streets. You need to, you need to make mistakes. You need to suffer. You need to have the tax man knock I've been saying this for years, man. I would tell people that, hey, uh, give me two young men, two young women, right? They're 18 years old. I've been saying this for years, man, right? When I'm trying, trying to make a point uh, on education, and education has, has its value for sure. Give me two young men, 18-year-old kids right here, right? One kid goes to a prestigious university, learns business from a business professor. They study, all that stuff, research, papers, read books, class, all that good stuff. Kid number two does not go to school. He shadows a successful businessman for, two, for four years. Under his wing, reading the books he reads, in his meetings, learning from him, shadowing him every single day. Maybe he's insistent, maybe he's sitting on, on major deals being cut, all that good stuff, negotiating skills, processing issues, ups and downs of the business. In four years, who do you hire to run your company? The kid who shadowed a successful CEO, businessman, or the kid who learned in theory what business is? Who do you want to hire? We can go back and say, well, prestigiously, he had discipline, certain things. He, was, he showed up every single day. Well, he, he's committed. He finished something. He finished something. Okay, yeah, okay. He showed up every... Wait, who, who do you want to hire then? It's your business, right? This is what he's saying. He's saying that we learn through experience. We learn through experience. And so even in my life, guys, most of you guys know I'm a college dropout. I've, I've said that. I've been in four foot. I'm not honest. I'm a, I'm a, I did not finish school at all. I know guys that have their MBA, they all run circles around. Well, why is that? Because I'm better than them? No, not at all. Experience. Just experience. The books I've read, the means, the means I've been in, the people I've associated with, the successful businessmen I've shadowed for years, that I've been around, who have done deals, done mergers, acquisitions. I've seen it happen, right? That is a value that I bring to the table. And that was, that was gained through experience. And knocking at your door. You got to deal with all that stuff so that you make sure it doesn't happen again. I really think that, that humans are stupid enough to only learn the hard way. That's kind of how it works. How accurate is that? Because <laughs> you, you to, let me just say before this, yeah. I see a $5 million Bugatti. Yeah. And I'm like, maybe a guy with $30 million won't spend his money on a $5 million Bugatti. Don't make sense. So yeah. he's probably got some. Yeah. You know what's actually the, the saying, if you know what you have, you ain't got much. That is completely true. Yeah. I don't have a clue how much money I have. When I was broke, I knew exactly how much money I had. I had 117 pound in the NatWest, and that was it. I'm poor, rent paid, I ain't got nothing else. When I was broke, I knew exactly how much I had. But now I'm at a point where it gets really difficult to truly measure how much money I have. Because you have cash, okay, that's easy. I, I have some crypto, which is constantly fluctuating. And then you have assets, and the price of the assets is constantly fluctuating. Mm. And then I have companies and income streams, which need to be valued. And how do you value them, right? They can be an eight times multiplier in some circumstances and others they'll be a 10 times multiplier. Yeah. Uh, so it's really difficult for me to put a value on it. If, so, if you were to say to me, how much money do I have in the bank? But then even then, 
So I've got to be careful what I say on this podcast. <laughs> but even then, even then, once once you have a healthy respect for money, once you get past a certain amount of money, you don't need it in the bank. Like there's there's no point in me having 50M liquid in the bank. Why? What what am I going to buy? You know, you're like, as long as you have whatever you have in the bank to, to run around the world with, you have enough. So you try and put that money to use, right? You buy assets, X, Y, Z. So it's really difficult. I mean, I, I have my online school, which we'll talk about later, Hustlers University. Yep. I, that's already been valued. That was valued at 300 million. When did you start Hustlers University? A year ago. A year ago. Fuck. Yeah. And that's valued at 300 million. Yeah. So, but then I ain't going to sell it. So, but then again, I had a valuation between 280 and 340. So again, how much money do I have? I don't know. I, I, so I could, if I really wanted to, if I wanted to sit here and say I was worth 500 million, I could prove that. Whoa, man. So Andrew Tate is dropping so many bombs right now, man, that he just overheated the iPad. It shut down. So uh, excuse you for the interruption. Excuse you for the interruption, guys. We're going to just transfer this to my iPhone. Hopefully, he does not keep bringing the heat. Hopefully, he does so that his phone does not overheat also, guys. So let's, let's, get, let's get right into it. They're take my 20 million pound house off me. Maybe it takes three years, but they will over a parking ticket. So by buying that property, you're now giving all of the gov you're giving the government a way to hurt you. You're giving them a leverage over you. Interesting. And I'm at the point of wealth now. I have enough hidden money where I don't want any government to have any leverage over me. I want a government to say, Andrew, we don't like you. And he's saying, get fucked. <laughs> Safe. All right, I won't come then. Bye. Like, and that's the problem with property. Property is a, is a tricky one. I know you can make money with it, but you have to understand that you're, they'll use it against you, man. It's a leverage, so. But let me ask you though, I understand, I completely understand the whole concept of, the, you know, coming out of the matrix and stuff, yeah? But for what reason? Like, what's the end goal? Like, where do you see your life in terms of in the future? I'll tell you why. I always knew I wanted to escape the matrix before I escaped it. And let me tell you why. If COVID has not woke people up in the last three years, I don't know what's wrong with you. The government came along, closed your business down by force, forced you to have a medical procedure you didn't want, made you stay in your house and cover your face with, oh, because of something with a 99.9% .9 fucking survival rate. They come along and literally broke every single rule. They broke the Geneva Human Rights Convention, every single law that they wrote themselves. They just broke them all under the guise of safety. More people committed suicide from mental health issues or more people died from missed doctor's appointments for real injury, for real diseases because of this crap. They came along and did it because they were told to by someone above the government because the government's not even in charge of anything. And, and, now they've, and now they've gone back to normal. Everyone thinks they're not going to do it again for some other reason. You think across the next 30 years they're not going to come back with some new shit? Fuck them. Next time, when they come along with this crap, I'm out. I'm bouncing. See ya. When they did this, I went to Sweden. Sweden was open the whole time. Sweden yeah. never locked down. I was in clubs in Stockholm while everyone else was here locked in their houses, clapping for the NHS like a jackass. I was in the nightclub. No masks, no vaccine, no lockdown, nothing. Running around with Swedish chicks. So I just run to freedom, right? But if I had, let's say, a big property within the UK, I can't just say fuck the UK. Yeah. So once you escape the matrix and you try and find a way to get your wealth outside of the system, then you can exist. Kind of interesting point there about real estate, right? Not owning any real real estate um, because the government can 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 hold it, can can hold you captive, things of that nature. I, I'm not sure how I, how I feel about that. I don't say I agree 100 percent. He mentioned that you can make a lot of money in real estate, um, acquiring assets um, over time. They they they, they 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 build you build wealth and appreciate in your, in your real estate portfolio, right? Also a great way to pass down legacy to, to family, through real estate, through land. I think owning land is, is very important. It's the only thing that, that's, not, that's not growing. Not, there's no more extra land being built in, in America, in, in the country, in the world, really in general. I mean, except for maybe if you're in Monaco, I was in Monaco and they're building land. They're like building land out towards, towards the sea. It's where like they're actually building, adding on land, taking land out further to the sea in Monaco. But that's a different story, right? Uh, land's not being built. So, Hey, so um, that, that, that's his opinion, right? Andrew Tate believes that, hey, owning land is not a good thing um, because you can, the, the government can control you. He wants to be able to get and go, and go where he wants to go and not have to be, not to appease, have to appease the UK or the USA or whatever country you're in. Geographically anywhere. And once you can do that, then laws don't really apply to you. If they made a law in the UK I was unhappy with, I'd just leave. And if they made a law in Romania where I live I'm unhappy with, I would just leave. I don't have, I, I don't have to be a lawbreaker. I don't have to be a, a criminal. I'll just go somewhere else, right? So... Property kind of ties you down, things tie you down. And if you look at the real high levels of wealth, if you look at the billionaires and stuff, they're trying to do the same thing. They don't own anything. They have a share in a company which owns a shell company in the Cayman Islands, which Got owns it. this subsidiary of a company that makes sense. in Dubai. And that makes sense. They, their trust, their trust own houses and own land. They don't own anything. I, I heard a quote from uh, J.D. Rockefeller. He said that, that own nothing, control everything. So if he's referring to that, it makes 100% sense. Own nothing, control everything. Your corporation owns that. 
your trust owns that. Me? I own nothing. Wealth? I have no wealth. I'm broke as a joke on paper. I have nothing. But my trust, my, my sale corporation, they own everything, right? And I control them. It's that. It's the Aikido. It's the same thing. Get out of the matrix. That's what everyone's trying to do. Right? You know, I was going to ask you this later on in the podcast, but it seems like a, a good time to ask you now, yeah? You uh, Obviously, I want to initially do this podcast in Romania. I thought it'd be sick coming to your house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but every time you're trying to arrange something, you're on a jet flying off somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Next place is everywhere. So yeah. I thought, you know, while you're in the UK, we do it here. But what's your reason for moving to Romania? And do you own the house in Romania then? Yeah, so uh, the house in Romania is owned by a subsidiary of a shell company, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We'll, okay. leave, it, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. But, um, but uh, and I moved to Romania because it felt more free than the UK in certain aspects. And it is. In yep. certain aspects, it's certainly more free. The, the, you're always, as, a, as an individual, you always have to make a trade-off. And the trade-off is usually between uh, laws and the strength of the government and the, and the judicial system and your safety. Right. This is the usual trade off. So Dubai, which I love and I spend a lot of time in, the judicial system is extremely harsh. The laws are extremely harsh, but it's very, very safe. You give me a powerful government and a powerful police force, but you give me my safety to wear a five million dollar watch. I'll take that all day. But you have countries like America and England where the judicial system and the police are dangerous and they can mess you up at a whim, but they don't even give you your safety. So now you want, now I have to be scared of the cops arresting me for no reason and the criminal killing me. So they don't even give me a fair trade off. So in my view, if I'm going to live in a country with a strong judicial system and a strong legal system, I want them to provide me my safety on the street mm. and the safety of my family. And if they don't do that, I don't see why they're seen as so strong. There's countries in Africa and Southeast Asia, et cetera, where the ju judicial system's a joke. And then fine. The streets aren't safe. The police ain't doing their job. That all makes sense to me, right? But when the police are going to come along and mess you up for not wearing a mask or catch you for speeding and wreck your life, but they can't even offer you safety, then fuck them. So I decided to move somewhere else. And there are countries in the world where there's a really interesting, delicate balance of uh, a government and a police force which are not strong. And when I'm saying that, I'm not saying I'm breaking the law. I'm not saying it in that way. I'm saying that minor infractions or tiny things are not going to be, I'm not going to be persecuted to the end of earth yeah, like yeah. I would in the UK for a parking ticket. Yeah, it's right? mad because they literally say in the UK all the time, people get caught more for speeding and shit like that than people getting caught for stabbing. A hundred percent, right? And this is what I even said. Like in Romania, you don't get parking tickets. Yeah. You just fucking park. You just dump the car, nobody gives a shit, right? <laughs> so it's just a different way of life over there. But at the same time, Romania and a few other countries in the world, a lot of them are in Eastern Europe, they have a strong morality because they're very religious countries. So although the police are not seen as a strong police force, they're not like the English police, they're not as well funded, they don't have as big, as fast cars, whatever, whatever. Yeah. It's actually very safe because people just have a different view of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it all adds up. So I moved there purely for small things, bro. Kept getting parking tickets, kept getting this, that, a letter. When you're living in the UK, bro, you get a new letter through your mailbox every day. Someone wants money for something. You did something wrong. Tax you money. had some fun. HMRC. Yeah, you were breathing <laughs> that day. Give us money. I was just like, fuck, why am I here? Bounce. Yeah. So I just left and I had really good friends in Romania. I went to visit and ended up staying. So, But so. why not Dubai? Because me personally, if I was to move anywhere, I'd probably go to Dubai. I understand. I completely understand that. That's a good choice. And it's, Because it's, the only thing we've been like, us boys have all have probably been caught speeding, especially my man here. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's the only thing, they don't really give a shit about speeding like that. They'll pull you over, say, why are you speeding, all yeah. that. But the second you commit a proper crime, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah. You know and, I mean? and, and I respect Dubai. I really like Dubai. And like I said, I even have no problems obeying every single tiny law down like speed down to speed if you're going to give me my safety. But if you cannot offer me my safety on the street, then I think that you've failed as a country and failed as a judicial system. And I don't see why I should have to comply with any of your rules. As you wrap up this reaction, guys, to Andrew Tate's video about money, wealth, and power, one thing you'll see is this. Regardless of how... His tactics are, you may say he's a little loud mouth, he's a little cocky, he's a little arrogant at times, man. He's a guy who understands principles of hard work, applying yourself, and just money wealth, and wealth, wealth management in general, right? And so, one thing I've noticed is that successful people leave clues. If you go study successful people, they aren't victims. They don't blame anybody else. They say, hey man, if it's out there, why can't I go get it? So, I want to implore you and encourage you to go out there and and go learn go learn a skill set go read go challenge yourself um, um, um you are capable of winning in, in life 
Regardless of what it is, man, like God created you with a purpose in your, and, and he, had a, he had a plan for you. The challenge is this. The world tells you to, to walk the line and, 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 and accept mediocrity and don't challenge the, the, the status quo and just walk the line. No, 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 no. I'm gonna, I want to I wanna encourage you to be different, to be unique. Go out there, challenge the status quo, improve yourself, man. Work hard, get a skill, go serve others and build wealth for yourself, guys. That being said, it's your boy Chris Hart here. And um, today, guys, if you have any, any comments you wanna drop in the comment section below, please comment on what you've got from the video today. Any questions you may have for me, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Do not forget to follow us on Instagram, at Sold Out Serving to the next time. Next time, God bless, I'll see you soon.